Good morning, brethren, sisters, church of God. Please, 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 get a authorized version of the scriptures, referred to as the King James Version. Please, go ahead and get a set of the scriptures, okay? Please, don't get a Bible. Don't get a Bible. Get the scriptures. There is a difference. There is a difference. There's a big difference. Please, get an authorized version of the scriptures and read along with me today. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Read along with me. Check me out. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Read along, because guess what? Guess what? Guess what? This goes quicker than that sometimes, and vice versa. Okay? Now, I say that for those saints, those of you of the Church of God, okay, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of truth. I get those two mixed up every once in a while. You know, pillar and ground, ground and pillar, whatever. But, this video actually, actually, is not really intended for the body of Christ. It is. It is. The, you know, cause, dude, get the scriptures and follow along. Okay? Check me out. Don't believe what I'm saying. Believe what this says. Okay? It's very simple. It's very simple. Okay? Just because, just because someone's got the look, someone's because someone's got the, the speech, okay? That be a Berean, okay? And for those of you people like you atheists and you lost people to who this is more pointed towards, I'm going to do my best not to like skip a groove or skip over my tongue, okay? But please, please, this is not for your entertainment. This isn't. What you see here is about this. The authorized version of the scriptures. That, this is what this is about. The scriptures. Okay? So, with that said, Colossians 2. One verse to start. Verse 8. Beware. Take heed. Show caution. Lest any man <laughs> or woman, <laughs> any man spoil, like, you know, there's age steak, right? Where it gets a little gray and then spoil gets rotten, okay? Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, the love of man's wisdom, man's wisdom, which is earthly, sensual, devilish. Earthly comes from dirt. Sensual, led by your senses, your feelings, your emotions. And that's devilish. Don't trust your feelings. Don't trust your emotions. If someone trusts in their own heart, Scripture calls you a fool. And the fool says in his heart there is no God, except themselves. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the foiled, and not after Christ. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah, um, verses of scripture that you, saint, ought to have committed to memory. At least the address. At least the address. Isaiah 5, 20, on to verse 23. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put dark for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter, Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes. Oh, philosophers. <coughs> These uh, atheists. 
no such thing. An atheist doesn't believe in a deity, doesn't believe in a god, so they claim. But every single one of you atheists do. It's the one that you look at in the mirror. Okay? Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine. Wine that comes from Rome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you, a lot of you probably did on uh, Ash Wednesday. Yeah. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. Verse 23. Which just as if I, which justify the wicked for reward. That could be tangible, or it could be a following, or whatever. You know, we, we think in process of a, uh, tangible stuff, but that reward is a little bit more broader than that. Okay? which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him, which just as if I. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine. Isaiah 22. Isaiah 22. Verses 12 on verse 14. And in that day did the Lord God of hosts called to weeping, and to mourning, and to baldness, and to girding with sackcloth. And behold, and this, this right here is touching on what we're going to be ta uh, uh, tackling today. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen, and killing sheep, eating flesh, and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we shall die. You only live once, huh? They have the acronym, I believe, that's what you call that. YOLO. You only live once. So yeah. 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 Philosophy and vain deceit after their dead traditions of men. Mighty to drink wine and justify the wicked for reward, huh? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die, because you only live once. And this all came about after millions and billions of years, and you don't have any evidence that your God even exists. Oh, I got a whole lot of evidence, yeah. But see, that interferes with your little scheme and plan of things, doesn't it? The evidence is right here. You don't want it. That's your problem. Unless you're a Calvinist where you have no choice in the matter and you're held at gunpoint and coerced. Hey, you never answered the scriptural arguments, by the way. You just went after a character thing. And hey, two can play at that game, but you never did answer the scriptures that were against your little Calvinistic teaching. That's all I gotta say about that. That's all I gotta say about that. Okay? Anyway, anyway, anyway. And it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts, Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. You only live once. What a stupid, stupid philosophy to justify any sin. Hey, you only live once, so have a good time. Enjoy yourself. Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Huh? Sleazy believers, fake gracers kind of play into that. But they add that, well, just believe and receive, and you, you shouldn't do that. But don't worry about it. You just saved yourself by your belief. So go ahead, go on, go on. Eat and drink for tomorrow you die. And hey, you got your cake and eat it too. What a, what a, what a stupid, stupid philosophy. You only live once. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Do you 
only live once. Well, that depends on what you're talking about. This, this, yes, this piece of dirt that will from, as it says in Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, okay, not 9, and in Genesis chapter 3, absolutely, uh, where is that, is that verse 18, right? Uh, okay, uh, uh, verse 19, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Right? Okay. This body that you and I have came from dirt. And a dear brother, a little wabbit here, a dear brother left an awesome comment in one of the videos about the rods of the magician. Ah, that, that, go and get on that one, brother. That was a good one. That was a good one. And I'm going to uh, tantalize you all for something to think about this, especially you, brother. Wood once lived, didn't it? Was considered living, not like man, you know, who draw or a fish or a dog or a putty titty or anything like that. But wood was once, you know, in and of itself, in a way, living. Uh, they call them dead trees, right? Is dirt in and of itself alive? Our bodies are made out of dirt, but the Lord breathed into us, you know, put the, you know, this, this is, these are vessels of clay, or uh, vessels of earth, excuse me, vessels of clay. This, these are vessels of earth, okay, made out of dirt. Our spirit and soul are housed in this sagging skin suit, okay? So this, this only lives once. Yeah. But do you see what you're looking at? It, and even Ruckman talked on this. Ruckman taught on this. What you are looking at is not really me. But no, you you you're seeing my body. You're seeing my sagging my sagging skin suit. Okay, that's what you're seeing. The me, as far as my spirit and soul, ah, you aren't seeing. Okay, you're only looking at the you're only looking at the skin suit. You know, and that and that's why we have to abhor it. <laughs> okay, that's why we have to abhor it. And it's this that the enemy focuses everything on. Look at it. Okay, we talked about this 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 week. Okay, but. The reality is, this body will die. Your spirit and soul are eternal. Okay? Man is three. Man is comprised of three, just like God the Father is. We all have a spirit. We all have a soul. We all have a body. Okay? The body that we are housed in will die. Our spirit and soul, which, you know, and hey, evolutionists, <laughs> explain to me, and people have. Some of these evolutionists and atheists have tried this. It's, it's like, wow. Wow. You, you guys are that full of wonder. Uh, explain to me the evolution of the soul. Again, there are evolutionists out there and atheists that don't believe in the soul. Yeah, that's God said. Okay? The reality is, dear friend, you do not only live once. Down here, in this, yes. There, you know, and we're going to touch on these verses. There are those who have asked, like a dear brother, uh, Brother Jeff asked me in one day, it's like, okay, we saints, we get a new resurrected body. What about the, the guys who stand at the, uh, the uh, great white throne? Uh, do, do, do they have like their earth, earthly body, um, whatever again, to stand? I don't know. I don't know, to be honest with you. <laughs> hey, what a concept, okay? But, see, you only live once is a justification 
for you to just as if I any kind of devilment you want. A lot of these devils are like that. It's like they, They're living like a devil and then they think they're on their deathbed. They're going to uh, repent and get saved. And No. Is it possible? Yes. Probable? No. Hebrews 9, verses 27 and 28. This, this is a very dangerous stupid philosophy. And I know of people who live their lives according to, well, you only live once. And when you have that mentality, oh, wow, I need that. Well, I'm only going to live one time, so why not get into some debauchery? Hey, I'm married. Why not dip the, my toes in the water somewhere else? She ain't never going to know, or he ain't never going to know, right? Why not shoot yourself up with a little heroin or something, huh? Why don't you snort a line? Why don't you go ahead and smoke like a, a chimney? Huh? Why don't you kill your liver with uh, with uh, all kinds of alcohol, right? Why not? Hey, I've never seen anything like that before. Let me later. Let me let me watch this. You only live once. Stupid. Absolutely stupid. And it's not true. It's not true. Yes. When you die, when you die, Hebrews 9, 27 and 28, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, what death? Death of the natural body. But after this, the judgment. Oh, and atheists, <laughs> atheists, Evolutionists, Calvinists, <laughs> a lot of Christians, fake gracers, they have this big problem with judgment. So Christ was once offered Catholic to bear the sins of many. And of course the Calvinists, uh, pick, they, they strain it in that and swallow the camel. So it says many. So, a select few. Like Yosemite Sam or something. I, I, I'm done with that. So Christ was once offered Catholic to bear the sins of many. Not a select few like Calvinism teaches. Okay? Many. It's available to all, but not everybody's going to go the elect way of the cross. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Hmm. See, when you're off sowing your wild oats or whatever, um, y you have to remember in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, okay? <laughs> okay, 11. And you know, you atheists and you ridiculous evolutionists, um, you're not going to get away from this. You, Oh, you guys are trying all you want and you're living your, your best life now, and I hope you do. But at the end of the day, someone's wrong and someone's right. Man is wrong, God is right. Period. And yes, Mr. Dade Murphy, yes, you will find out when you die. But see, the whole point is by then it's too late. You poor fool. You poor fool. Uh, Ecclesiastes 11 verses 9 and 10. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. Now go ahead. But know thou. But know thou. Forget. You, know, you go right ahead. You just dig in your grave deeper, boy. You're just, you're just piling it on to when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the great white throne of judgment. <clears throat> but know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into, there's that word again, judgment. 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 
it's it's full of wonder, really is full of wonder, how evasive, especially Christians are, about judgment. It's 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 a, it's full of wonder, it really is. You now, if we would judge ourselves, and we talked about this in the last video, okay? If we would judge ourselves, we wouldn't be condemned with that. What's your problem with judgment? Are you afraid? You ought to be of the Lord, because whether you like it or not, to Him, you're going to give an account. So, so run along and do your thing. But know thou that for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart. Now, Solomon is not talking about you being flippant about these things. And like, well, hey, I'm going to, well, let's, you only love, no, 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 no. Keep breathing. And put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. When you're a kid, you want to grow up so you can vote, get beer, or smoke cigarettes, right? And then when people, the, uh, the beauty of the age is the gray head, okay? Um, but then when they get old, they want to go back to the youth. I, I would never, ever, ever want to go back to being 18 or something. God forbid. Now, if I could be near going on 50 and have that physicality, of like a 20 year old body um not actually being that age but if the body that would be a little different right 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 you you us old farts right okay they, yeah i mean a lot of us have <laughs> abused uh our body i i know i have right um if i could have my body to feel like it was when it was in its 20s that's different but go back to the, the of 18 or and isn't it funny that from uh, from 20 to 30 how much the the 20 ish crowd seems to know everything it's weird it's weird it's weird we're very very strange very strange first Corinthians chapter 15 we're going to do a little reading in first Corinthians chapter 15 now okay 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I, I beg your pardon. Cold coffee here. Made out of dirt, brother. Was dirt ever, ever, in and of itself alive? Our body is made out of dirt. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But who gave that dirt life? God did. Was it the dirt itself? That brother... And I, you'll watch this, uh, brother. That that was. Pray for, pray about that one, that the Lord opened that one up. That that, beautiful, beautiful. I love that kind of stuff. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verses thirty on to verse fifty. <gasps> wow, brother, that's a well. Go away and watch some idiot who who, who looks the part. And it, yeah, go ahead, go away. If this is too much for you, huh? Yeah, you'd rather look at the TikTok videos, right? <laughs> or and, or look at a couple of people bickering back and forth for as a fan man, huh? First Corinthians fifteen thirty on to verse fifty. And why stand we in jeopardy every every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. <laughs> die daily. You're not getting any younger. You're getting older. And uh, somewhere on the channel here, um, the older you get, the harder it gets. The longer you walk with the Lord, the harder it gets. Okay? Well, I've been I've been a Christian for 25 years, and it's getting easier. Um, really? Really? I don't think you're saved. You got that kind of mentality. What's wrong with you? <laughs> okay? Die daily. Are you dying daily? Hmm? One step closer to going home, 
as my wife and I always, you know, we always make a mention of that in our prayers. You know, one step to going home. But are you dying to that daily? Are you? Hmm? Are you dying to yourself daily? Are you dying to the world daily? Think about. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, beasts, unregenerate, natural men, I'll go as far as to say Christians today, especially these weird King James Bible believing Christians. Okay. What advantage it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. I am astonished when I get the chance, when the Lord gives the chance for myself or my wife and I in personal stuff out there, when we get to talk to people and the thing of the resurrection comes up. I've mentioned this to you before. Now, as a Christian, they know that they're supposed to believe that Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. But here's the thing. In this through experience, rarely, rarely have I encountered a Christian who truly believes in the, res in the resurrection. They certainly don't live like it with the, because Christianity likes to incorporate let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. It's like, of course I believe in the resurrection. Kinda kinda go at them on that. It's like, oh do you? Do you? You know you're gonna give an account one day. You know we're we're gonna be judged for our rewards if you're you claim to be a saint. Okay, our, our works are gonna be tried for rewards at the judgment seat of Christ, not salvation, okay? Not salvation. We're once saved, always saved. When we're at the judgment seat of Christ, what's going to be, we're going to be looking at that today, so don't worry about it, okay? Okay? I'm always amazed of how little of Christianity truly believes in the resurrection of the dead. <laughs> it's like, dude, today ain't no resurrection. What are we doing? What are we doing? Huh? What is this? Oh, it's, it's theater. It's a pageant play. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Evil communications. You know, a Catholic, you don't know if you're going to heaven when you die because it's a sin of presumption. Calvinist, you're elect. And you don't even, it's not even your faith. It's the faith of Jesus himself. That's nonsense. Nonsense. <laughs> Charismatic. <laughs> you, you got a flake in tongues. Just believe and receive. Evil communications. Corrupt good manners. Think about that. In context of what we just looked at. If after the manner of men, manner of men, manner of men, earthly, sensual, devilish. I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. Manner of men, beasts at Ephesus. Unregenerate, the natural man. These as natural, brute beasts. Hmm. Natural, unregenerate. Given the, giving themselves over to pleasures. Hey! And they mighty to drink wine, justify the wicked for reward. Not always tangible, but hey, the reward of, hey, I can do whatever I want. I can have my, eat, my cake and eat it too. Hmm. What advantage is it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we, we die. And you look at a lot of these Christians. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. This is, I personally believe, this is really good, uh, really well exhibited in the charismatic Pentecostal people. 
with, you know, my town to find favor, my town to be blessed. Okay? Your best life now, right? This isn't, no, this isn't your best life. If you're, you know, a false convert Christian, of course it is your best life now. And the God of Christianity, which is not, which is not the Jesus Christ of the Scripture. He'll give you, you know, who's answering the prayers, buddy? <laughs> who's answering your prayers? I wonder, pal. Huh? Who's answering your prayers? Anyway. And see, when someone has this mentality of let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. No resurrection. Evil communications. Corrupt good manners. Well, hey! Why not go ahead and do whatever? I, you're being too extreme. What are you too, you're too serious. Oh, oh, that, yeah, you're too serious. You're too serious. You can't be serious enough. You can go a little overboard sometimes. Totally, totally different video, but I mean, we can't be serious enough. Especially, especially with Scripture. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Paul believed in being sinless. Was Paul sinless? Romans 7. I'm going to write that one down too. Romans 7. You know, those dear brethren out there who struggle with this daily, y'all need to be in that Romans 7. You need to take your time, spend two hours in one chapter. Go right ahead. Glean. Let the Lord guide. I believe if the body of Christ, the saints, had a more better working understanding and knowledge given of the Lord on Romans 7, the devil would lose some of his ammunition to attack us with. I really do. Well, Paul believed and says, hey, don't sin. But like I said, you read Romans 7. <laughs> That which I do, I allow not. But that which I hate, that I do. Okay? The greatest of the saints of the church of God. Sin. All had a pride problem. Okay? But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool! That which thou sowest is not quickened, made alive, except it die. And, and, this, and right here, I believe we use this um, text for the, to, again, to refute the stupidity of sleazy believism, fake grace, um, that avoid personal death to self. Repentance of yourself. You gotta die. You gotta be broken before you can be fixed. You gotta die to be born again. Okay? Oh, that's where the... Oh, dude, just shut up. Yes, Peter said born again. But Paul defined what being born again was. <laughs> uh. Okay. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, made alive, except it die. Okay. Any truly saved saint had a death to themselves. Pride was crushed. Doesn't mean you still don't, you're totally removed of your pride because why? Our spirit and soul are housed in this. Okay? When you read Romans 8, where is sin? Here. Okay? All right? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. In order for to go the way of the cross, you got to die to yourself. And that's why, so that's, that's what Christianity hates. That's what, and that brings about, God loves you, and God's not angry at you. <clears throat> and that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It may chain chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body, as it hath pleased him. 
and to every seed his own body. Now pay attention. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. Yeah, like you eat the, the skin off of a salmon. Really good, really good uh, fats, healthy fats, and good in omega threes and stuff like that. Okay? And you know, um, chicken, chicken skin, chicken skin, also really good healthy fats. Okay? There are celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. The glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. One is earthy, one is spiritual. Okay? There is one glory of the sun, S-U-N, okay, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. This is really good, too, uh, scientific evidence for you atheists and evolutionists, that the stars differ, okay? So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body of the earth. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual spiritual body. Paul sums it up simply right there. Okay? This is our natural body. Now, like what Brother Jeff had brought up to me a while ago, it's like, well, at the great white throne, the people, you know, or the lost and whatnot, are they going to be put back into their natural body? I don't know, brother. You asked me that for a while. I, I, I you know, I got notes and whatnot. I, I sometimes forget, but I don't know. That's a good question, okay? Uh, will the Lord open something up on that? I don't know, but that is a good question. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. Saints, we get, a, we get a new body. We get a new body. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Okay. But the lost, the dead, you know, that kind of thing, are they going to be? I don't know. Good question. I don't know. Let's continue. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening, lowercase s, spirit. Albeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. Look your place here. And let's look in John chapter 3, John chapter 3, which we will be looking in today a little later. Okay, John chapter 3, uh, because Catholics, um, Catholics, Pentecostals, um, Campbellites like that idiot uh, um, Robertson and stuff like that, they teach you that you got to get baptized in water. Yeah, uh, no, no, no. Um, uh, where is that, uh, where he talks about, uh, ah, yes, John chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 8. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the capitalist spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Reference there is spiritual kingdom, okay? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the capital S spirit, the Lord himself, is lowercase s spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, ye must be born again. Paul never talked about being born again. He never said born again. You're right. He defined it. Paul defined being born again. You idiot! Being born again is guess for the Jews. Are you out of the... 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, you Christian, ain't you? <laughs> Nonsense. Nonsense. <laughs> I'm, I'm writing these down as I go for links in the description box. Okay. Nonsense. Paul defined what it is to be born again. Okay. You're a new creature. What makes you a new creature? The Lord within you. But then again, you got to remember, the Lord isn't holding a loaded gun to your head, forcing you to do what's right. So forget that. A lot of Christians out there want to tell you it's otherwise, especially them Calvinists. Watch out for them guys. Okay? That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, ye, more than one, plural, must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the capitalist spirit. Meaning, the Lord lives within them. Uh, look at verse 5. Okay? Except a man be born of water and of the spirit. That is a reference onto the matrix of the woman, her water breaking. Okay? All right, that is not a reference onto being baptized for salvation. Not at all. Okay, every single one of us that was born through the, the matrix, the womb of the woman, the her water broke, and that's a mess. Okay, <laughs> that's a mess. Um, that's what that means—a natural birth. Okay. The water breaks. That's what that means. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, okay? Verse 46 again. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. Verse 47. The first man is of the earth, earthy, a natural birth. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Must be born again. Yeah, you're right. Paul never said, born again. You, you won't find it in the Pauline epistles. You'll find it in Peter. Yes, you will. But, again, what, guys, watch out for this. Okay, uh, be born again. Uh, uh, fake gracers are also onto this kick as well. That's just for the Jews. And Paul never said, oh, so you rightly divide the word of truth? Oh, really? Oh, uh, how, what was, how was a man made right in the Garden of Eden? By grace through faith. Yes. <laughs> yeah, dispensational. Uh, my right foot. Yeah, okay, let's continue. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. As is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Hold your place, and let's go to Rome, uh, Romans. Uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, cap, uh, chapter 2, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, chapter 2, verse 14 and <laughs> 15. But the natural man, one who is not saved, regenerate, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the capital S, Spirit of God, the Lord himself. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet, he is judged of no man. What does that mean? Judged of no man. Spiritual people, how, how, are, they, how are we judged? Okay, we, we covered this in, uh, uh, what was that, Wednesday's video. Okay, let's continue. And, and as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Kingdom of God right there cannot be, cannot be a reference unto the kingdom of heaven. It can't be. The kingdom of heaven is all works, okay? It's all works. During the kingdom of heaven, you don't need faith when the guy's on the throne. So, kingdom of God there is clearly 
reference onto spiritual. And how many of these Christians are trying to force themselves in to the kingdom of God? But they got the look in the dinner. <clears throat> Chafes my buttocks, I'll tell you that. Okay? John chapter 12. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. John chapter 12, we want verses 23 on to verse 27. John chapter 12, verse 23 on to verse 27. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. See, you have to die to yourself. That's the repentance that is required for salvation. Okay? Not you push a, push a rock uphill. No, no. The repentance is you're repenting of you. Thinking you're a good person. Thinking that you're special elect because, you know... Because you, you you know Jesus gave you your faith you, you know it's it's his faith not yours yeah Jesus gave it to you it's his actual faith you never answered that scripturally you wicked devil but anyway okay just I'm just saying you have to die to yourself you have to die to you and that's what Christianity hates. Especially the, the sleazy believists. They want their they want to eat and drink for tomorrow they die. He that loveth his life shall lose it. Yeah. Evil communications corrupt good manners. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Eternal life. And as one dear brother came, uh, made mention, it's like, well, our spirit and soul is what's eternal of us. So, we saints will have eternal life. The lost will have eternal torment. Even so, and we're going to look at this at the end of this video, in a aspect, even the lost will have eternal life. Because remember, brother, you brought that up. And so, and, uh, yeah, I, you know who you are. Uh, you brought that up. It's like, Brad, they're, they're in hell. How, how is that life? Well, the, it's eternal. It's eternal torment. See, that's the thing. And you you, you devils, you atheists, okay, you evolutionists, you, you all you Christians that hate judgment, okay, and that, that twit Andy guy was picking on the one brother from England, okay, okay. Uh, Soul annihilationism? Soul annihilationism. What does that mean? That your soul goes, you know, it says in scripture that God is able to kill body, uh, to kill your soul. It says that he's able. Does not say that he will do that. To the contrary, scripture tells you he does the opposite. And we will we'll see the evidence of that at the end of this video. Okay? So, yes, in a sense. You do have eternal life. But is it eternal life with the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, or eternal damnation? You're right, brother. That ain't much of a life. But their soul, their worm dieth not. See? So, let's continue. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Let's read uh, to verse 29. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. 
others said an angel spake to him. Verse 29, I believe, is significant about the redemption of the purchased possession. Us saints were alive. We said, come up here. We're all going to hear our names. Come on, let's go. Or whatever. We're going to, he's going to be addressing all of us at once. How does God do that? He's God. He can, he can do that. Okay? We're going to hear our names. People are going to get left behind. They're going to hear something else. They're not going to be able to hear it. Like with the dudes with Paul, you know, they, they, you know, what was it? They heard something, but they didn't see or something like that. The point is, about verse 29, I believe for the redemption of the purchased possession, we're going to hear our names at once. And whoa, go up. The lost are going to hear something else. Maybe a thunder. Okay? Wanted to throw that in there for you. Okay? John 3. John 3. John 3. Verses 30 on verse 36. <laughs> Amen. He must increase. But I must decrease. I die daily. What about you? He must increase. I must decrease. I die daily. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthy. And speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Therefore they hear them. Uh, hold your place here. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. You know, gotta watch it for the gotta watch out for these people, brother, guys. You really do. You really do. 1 John chapter 5. Oh, excuse me. Uh 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Verses uh 5 uh, and 6. They are of the world. Uh 1 John 4, verses 5 and 6. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Why? Because they are earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Go back to John chapter 3. Okay? John chapter 3. Let's continue. Let's read verse 31 again. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth, earthly. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the cattle spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. And you read in Matthew 25, verse 46, I believe that is. Let's reference that really quick. The last verse in Matthew chapter 25. I'm just going to add that to this, but don't need it, but I'm just going to reference it. Verse 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. See, where the worm dieth not, brother, and the fire is not quenched. You're right. <laughs> That's not life being punished, but it is eternal. Your soul doesn't get burnt up. And what a vile way to justify anything. Well, hey... Hey, if so, and so, you know, that's what this, this, uh, this puts the, uh, the companion Bible. Bullinger, uh, the, um, Shepherd's Chapel idiots, okay, that guy from Shepherd's Chapel, they're Bullingerites, okay, they're Bullingerites, and he was soul annihilationism. That, okay, your soul will just be burnt up in the lake of fire. So, hey, why get saved then? If all I've got, hey, if I'm going to die, just my soul get burnt up, that's it. Hey, let me eat and drink for tomorrow I die. Stupid. Stupid. Okay, absolutely stupid. John, John 5, 
verses 24 on to verse 29. Ver I mean, five, yes. Verily, verily, 24 on to verse 29. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Now also, too, I've got to mention, the links will be for this in the description box, about rightly dividing, okay? Did Christ Jesus die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures yet? What? No. What is it? Why is that significant? It was still doctrinally the Old Testament. The law was still binding. Okay? All right? Doctrinally, it was still the Old Testament. This is what is called <laughs> instruction in righteousness. Okay? Let's keep reading. Verily, verily, I say unto you, excuse me, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Now remember, Death, burial, and resurrection. Our Lord Jesus Christ went to the spirits that were in prison, like the guys in Abraham's bosom. It's like, hey guys, guess what? Hey, paid the price. Let's go. Go to heaven's open. Heaven's open. Uh, somewhere on the uh, channel here, that, that video where we talk about Abraham's bosom, okay? Uh, in the Old Testament, before the death, burial, and resurrection, they went to Abraham's bosom, which was in the earth, okay? Because remember, Samuel, he came up. He didn't come down. He came up. I have you disquieted me. Or whatever he said. Okay? Remember that. Remember that. Okay? Remember that. Alright? But, there are, in Ephesians chapter 2, in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. You know the walking dead out there? The, there's a good one. Zombie apocalypse. Zombie apocalypse. Sorry, I'm writing down these so I don't forget. Um, you've heard, and uh, those of you lost people who watch the stuff about zombies and stuff, um, predictive programming. There are zombies out there. There are walking dead out there. Dead in their trespasses and sins. But, remember, here in John chapter 5, he went down to the spirits in prison and be like, Hey, come on! We're going. And the atonement was not made in hell, people. The atonement was made on the cross, not in hell. Watch out for King James Bible-believing Christians like, Oh, Stephen Anderson, who, who preached that the atonement for us was made when Jesus went to hell. <laughs> Crazy. Watch out for that. That's it. Okay. But see here, you know, like I said, went down to those uh, spirits that were in the prison. Um, and remember, we associate prison with horror today. Absolutely. But in the scriptural usage, prison was not something exactly always horrible, especially with the context of Abraham's bosom. Okay? Keep that in mind. Now let's re continue in um, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 3 again. And you hath he quickened, who are dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that's Satan, that the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You hear the gospel, the true gospel, and reject it, you're a child of disobedience. The individual who was in our house last Friday, a week ago today, um, he heard the true gospel, and he didn't want it, at least not yet, so he's a child of disobedience. He heard the real gospel. He was presented with the real Jesus Christ. Okay? The real Jesus Christ. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past 
in the lusts of the of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, nature, beasts at Ephesus, natural brute beasts, and were by nature the children of wrath as others. God does not love the Christ rejecting sinner. God does not love ya. Okay? <laughs> All right? You, his love is there to be had. You reject the gospel, God's wrath is upon you. God does not love ya. That is heresy. It's stupid, too. Okay? <laughs> stupid. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verses 19 on verse 23. Beg your pardon, brethren. Pause. Wow. Just pause this and whatnot. Um, we just had morons come to our door. <laughs> Mormons. Wow. Wow. Anyway. Romans. Wow. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Verses 19 on to verse 23. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, servants, made a choice, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. When you die, the body dies, but your spirit and soul are eternal. But now being made free from sin, but now being free from, but now being made, but now being made free from sin, and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, eternal life versus what? Eternal damnation. See, the eternal thing is what you need to get into your brain case. The eternal thing. Okay? The eternal thing. And that is what is lacking in Christianity. The eternal mindset. That's what's lacking. Of course, and like I said, <laughs> the, the, the morons at the door, you know, didn't, don't have time, you know, doing this, you know, or else, you know, whatever. But um, yes, most uh, most of the Christians that we have encountered, talking again about the resurrection of the dead, they give lip service, but you talk to them, they don't believe in a resurrection. That's 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 wonderful. Full of wonder. It's like, wow. Okay? Wow. Romans 14. Romans 14. You know, and, and this is, you know, Romans 14. Romans 14, verses 11 and 12. You know, it... it personally do not enjoy doing videos concerning other people. I, I really don't enjoy that. But when you take into account the eternal perspective that you're going to have to give an account for everything you have said, everything you have taught, and you're not even going to address the scriptural rebuke. Anyway. For as it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, 
every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Now, so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Now, in Romans chapter 14, yes, it is addressed to the saints. But this is a general statement, okay? All of us, saints, you lost people, all of us, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, Ed, Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Give an account. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. That is a general statement. You're not going to get away from the judgment of the Lord. You're not. You're not going to escape that. You, you can think that you came from a sniveling piece of snot out of the water trillions of years ago. You can think that we've got tons of evidence for you, that we have no evidence for you. At the end of the day, you are going to give an account to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a general statement. But, but, go to, let's continue, Isaiah 45, Isaiah 45, Isaiah 45, Isaiah 45, verses 21 on to verse 25. Isaiah 45, verses 21 on to verse 25. Isaiah 45, verses 21 on to verse 25. Tell ye, and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay, that Trinity stuff is nonsense. Okay. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say, In the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. And of course, Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, well, not 1 John, Philippians chapter 2, just uh, two verses, verses 10 and, 12, uh, 10 and 11, that at the name, uh, you know what, 9 on to verse 11, wherefore God hath, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. And there is only one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ. Okay. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. And see, these people who want to avoid judgment, they strain it in that and swallow a camel. It says should. Go away. Just go away. <laughs> That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Of things in heaven and things in earth. And things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. You're not getting away. You're not getting away from judgment people. You're not. Dude. 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 You're going to give an account. You're going to give an account. You need to get your head out of Rome's bucks. Okay. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 on to verse 17. Now, the difference here. We saved people. The judgment seat of Christ is for the saints of this dispensation. Because the ones that before, you know, with the law and whatnot, who were in Abraham's bosom, they went to heaven. They're in heaven because the Lord had, you know, the way to heaven is open. The judgment seat of Christ is for 
we the saints. Okay? For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Gold, silver, and precious stones can abide fire. Yes, you can melt down gold and silver, but, uh, you know, you, you take your little Bic lighter, and it's not going to melt that easily, okay? It will abide fire. It will abide fire, okay? Um, wood, hay, stubble, burn up like a, like a nothing, okay? Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day, a star, our Lord Jesus Christ, shall declare it. Or you could reference that into the, you know, the redemption of the purchase possession itself. Whatever. Okay? Because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. See, today, when you come to the Lord on his terms, the called, the elect way of the cross, and he saves you, you know, you die to yourself, you have contrition, and fear the Lord and call upon his name, and he save you. You're eternally secure. You're once saved, always saved. At the judgment seat of Christ, our works are going to be tried for our rewards. Prove it to you. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. And that's not a reference unto purgatory, you wicked Catholics. No, no, that's reference on to eternal security, okay? See, whatever you're doing for the Lord, that's going to abide. If you're an imitator or someone mimicking, that's your stuff, that's going to be burnt, okay? That's just an example. We're not going to even go any further on that one, okay? But the thing is, if it's you doing the work, it's going to be burnt up. But if it's a work that the Lord has called you to do and you're doing the work of the Lord, that's your reward. See how that works? Your salvation is fixed when you go to the Lord his way and he saved you. Once saved, always saved. The judgment seat is not for salvation, but for reward. That's what that is. Okay, let's continue. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the capitalist spirit of God dwelleth in you, and the Lord is that spirit. You're sealed with the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit, you know, our Father Jesus Christ. If any man, including ourselves, defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. God does not dwell in buildings made by hand. Dwells within saved, born again believer. Okay? Alright? Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Beg your pardon. <clears throat> One moment. Yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 4 on to verse 11. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Get our new body. Get out of here to be with the Lord. Any true saint wanted to go home yesterday, um, five seconds ago. Okay? Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God. Who hath also given unto us the earnest of the Spirit, that seal until the day of redemption. The Lord himself lives within the saved believer. You have the Father living within you. Okay. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. I've seen drinking for tomorrow we, we die. Oh, I hope that redemption doesn't happen soon. I'm having a... Who says something like that? Who? <laughs> you know, when I've encountered that, I've jumped on that with some of these Christians. I, I have. I've, I've kind of viciously attacked that. And push comes to shove. They ain't saved. They ain't saved. 
Paul's like, it's needful for me, I'm in a straight betwixt two. Okay, he was doing the work of the Lord. But when you encounter a Christian who's having their best life now and having their cake and eat it too and justifying everything, well, I, 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 I'm having a great time. Be very suspect of that if you ever encounter that. And please, by all means, take your scriptures when you encounter that and pounce. Let's continue. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Oh, but with all these infiltrators, to them it's, we walk by sight, not by faith, because the Jews require a sign. See, this whole thing again, touching on this again about the visual stimuli, okay, um, <laughs> it, it reeks of replacement theology, because the Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom, and we walk by faith, not by sight. And if you need a visual, I've seen the Lord. You, you, you ain't seen the Lord. I've seen it. No, you haven't. You have seen something. You saw an angel of light. Yeah, but you did not see the Lord. See, if your faith is predicated upon this, you, you got problems. You got problems. But let's continue. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor, not to save ourselves, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Saved saints are the ones who appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? The judgment seat of Christ is for the saints. Saved people. Period. Okay? Romans chapter 14 was a general statement telling you that everyone is going to give an account of themselves to God. You're not going to get away from God's judgment. Okay? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may get, receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Hmm. See, the life we live down here as saints will um, do with our judgment as far as rewards. Okay? Uh, for our rewards. All right, that's how that works. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. Paul never talked about fear, a fear of the Lord. Terror of the Lord, anyone? Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Now, Revelation chapter 20 is about the time of Jacob's trouble. The redemption of the purchased possession happens in Revelation chapter 4. We come up hither, okay? That's the redemption of the purchased possession. We get out of here. Time of Jacob's trouble is you know seven-year period where God turns his attention to Israel. There is no eternal security during the time of Jacob's trouble except... For the 144,000 Jews, don't believe these wicked, vile, rank, disgusting, free grace, easy believism, devil heretics. They tell you it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. They, they lie to you. Okay? But, Revelation chapter 20, verses 10 on to verse 15. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. And brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Three books. Three books. My personal favorites that uh, the Lord had me to do. Three books. Okay. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, 
which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. See, this is different than the great uh, than the uh, judgment seat, because see, our works are what's being tried for reward at the judgment seat. We're once saved, always saved, eternally secure. We go to the judgment seat. Our works are going to be tried for our rewards, not our salvation. Here, the great white throne, salvation. Okay? And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell were and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And people, heretics who don't want anything to do with judgment, they'll be like, so see, hell is only temporary. Uh, but it's in the lake of fire. It's in the lake of fire. It's eternal. It's not uh, soul annihilationism where your soul goes up like a puff. Hey, then you can justify anything, couldn't you? Okay. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. You know, when, when, you, when you're dealing with these heretics, when you're dealing with infiltrators who are so smooth and stuff like that, this, this, is, this is something that always comes to my mind. It's like, dude, you're playing a game with hell. You're playing a game with hell. You're playing a game that you're not going to win. You can get your head out from Betwix Rome's buttocks. Whoever you are, <laughs> okay? Mark 9, verses 43 under verse 48. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Well, Brad, you just read that. Hell is cast into the... Lake of fire! Hello! You're not getting away from this. Okay? Unless the Lord save you. You're going to go to hell and burn forever. Okay? Yes, hell gets cast into the lake of fire. Where their worm dieth not. And the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter a halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And you atheists, you uh, de devils, uh, uh, he's not talking literally. Okay, all right, where is that? All right, your hands. What are your hands touching? Okay, where are your feet taking you? And if thine eye offend thee, what are you looking at? What are you putting before your eyes? I will set in the wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of those who turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Huh? What, are, what are your hands touching? Where are your feet taking you? What are you looking at? And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God, spiritual, with one eye, than having two eyes to be cast into hell, fire, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. John 13. I, I had hoped that a dear brother would have jumped on this and still might have been, I, I don't know, but uh, John 13, John 13, come on. John 13, verses 4 onto verse 11. Now, in Mark chapter 9 here, we, what do we see? We see the hand, we see the feet, we see the eyes. Okay, what is your hands touching? Where are your feet taking you? You're going to the bar tonight, huh? It is Friday, right? 
right? What are you putting before your eyes? Huh? A Hollywood movie? Hey, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we shall die. Why don't we watch a little pornography, huh? What are you putting before your eyes? John 13, verses 4 and verse 11. He riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. After that he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Shimon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do, what I do, thou knowest not, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Now the feet, nasty, stinking, grimy feet, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, put a towel around his waist and washed their feet. Significance. What's the significance? You go where I'm going to go. You go where I tell you. You don't have to say yes, but I'm going to be the one to guide you. You are not walking on your own. You are not walking your own path. You go, go where I want you to. Hey, it's not a force. God doesn't force you to do anything. Okay? Significance. That's the significance of the washing of the feet. Follow the Lord. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answereth, answering him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Verse 45 of Mark 9. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Back to John 13. Shimon Peter, now look at this. Shimon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, look at this, but also my hands. And uh, Mark uh, chapter 9 verse 43 and if thine hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. John 13. But my hands, but also my hands and my head. Jesus had a crown of thorns put on his head. Uh, where are your eyes? Where are your eyes? <laughs> Where are your eyes? <laughs> and if thy, uh, Mark chapter 9, verse 47, And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Where their worm dieth not, then the fire is not quenched. Hell, which gets into the lake of fire, Burning judgment is eternal. Eternal. Okay, yeah. Death and hell are cast into the lake of fire. It's eternal. And unless the Lord save you, that's where you're going to be for eternity. Eternity. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Forever. And ever. And ever. John 13, verse 10. And 11. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean. But not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye not, ye are not all clean. And Second Timothy chapter two, I believe it is. Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two. Not first Timothy. Second Timothy chapter two.
Verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the seal saved, born again, believer in Christ. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from the name. So, you only live once, huh? This, yeah. This, yeah. The reality is, you have a spirit and soul that is eternal. Dear friend, whether you want to admit this or not, or accept it or not, that's irrelevant. You are going to spend eternity in one of two places. You can try to ignore the eternal aspect of existence, which so many atheists, okay, atheists, evolutionists, and a lot of Christians do, but the reality is, as it is appointed on the men once to die and after this to judgment, then you're going to one of two places. Forever. Forever. But see, Satan through his church, Roman Catholicism, and all her daughters, makes you focus just on this. It's easy. So the fact is, dear friend, you don't live only once. Down here is where you're going to be, where, where are you going to go? Are you going to be in heaven with the Lord? Or are you going to go to hell for eternity? Here is where these things are decided. And they're not decided for you. The Lord rebuke you. So, what's going to be? You, just, you see, y'all love this too much, don't you? And Satan, hey, flashes the world, flashes the world before your eyes. In a, oh, I bet that's my brother Jeff. In a moment of time, through your health phone or through a tablet or whatever, okay? Hey, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Hey, let's hear a good sermon from King James Bible believing Christian. Come, let's reason together, you and I. You only live once is one of the stupidest, ridiculous, wicked things out there, philosophies out there. And it's used to damn people to hell and to justify any kind of sins. And a lot of Christianity has incorporated that. So, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Uh, thank you for all you brethren who pray for us and help us. Thank you so very, very, very much. Um, do continue to pray for us and pray for each other. Pray for each other. You know, saints, we're going to have eternity with each other. Amen. But you know, hello, if you get a chance, contact a brother or sister. You know, if you, you got one of these... Do it. If you can. I mean, I, I understand, you know. But pray for one another. Pray for one another. Love you. Thank you for watching this if you do. And we will see you in the next video. Hopefully it will be that one on the, the rods. That, that, that was good, brother. That was good. That was a, that, that's good. That uh, Hopefully the Lord will open something up on that. That was good. I'll, I'll, I'll heart that and stuff like that. Never mind. See you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs>